All right, what's happening, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to the match review of Chelsea's loss away at Goodison Park, 3-1 against Everton in the Premier League. That's right, a defensive disaster class. Loads of pretty combinations in the midfield, loads of good stuff moving forwards, but generally, very poor. Just realised I didn't have my glasses on. I've got them now, so let's get back to the match review. Alright, so Chelsea have got a win away last time out. Obviously, Everton were in dismal form. They sacked Marco Silva and they got in the Evertonian legend Duncan Ferguson. Now, Lampard was weary to this because he knows how a team can rally and put in a good, passionate performance when you know, an underperforming manager goes and they get a club legend in. The sort of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer effect. Why couldn't I say it there? Anyway, you catch my drift. Turns out this game was exactly that. Very frustrating. I'm going to get into what happened in this game and give you my thoughts and opinions on this fixture and Chelsea moving forward. But I just want to say it is ruddy typical that Chelsea get West Ham after, you know, when they rally and do a great performance for Manuel Pellegrini and now they get Everton when Ferguson comes in and they rally at Goodison Park that became a cauldron for this game. To be honest, Chelsea were frustrating because they didn't take their chances, but they did score a goal in the 3-1 loss and if Chelsea were a better defensive team, they probably would have taken something from this game. Before I take you through it, remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you are new while I itch my neck. And also check out Yam Plays, my FIFA 20 gaming channel where I do play other games. Link is in the top of the description. It's a lot of fun and it might take your mind off a Chelsea loss if you are indeed a Chelsea fan. Anyway, enough rambling, let's go through the game and open up that analysis screen. So, there's the stats graphic from who scored next to me. Chelsea lined up with a 4-2-3-1 as per usual. Actually looked like quite a tasty lineup on the surface. Kepa in goal. Reese James at right back, who's been really impressing of late. Aspie moves over to left back, who's the more defensively sensible out of the two. Well, out of the three left backs, in theory. And the centre-back partnership was Zuma and Christensen, who did okay last time out. The double pivot consisted of Mateo Kovacic and N'Golo Kante, which a lot of people are really happy to see although Jorginho is a fan favorite and maybe in hindsight could have been used in this game those two are obviously very technical and good players and amazing on the ball as well as good uh, well Kante being incredibly good as an interceptor Mason Mount was playing in the hole as the number 10 Christian Pulisic on the left Willian on the right Tammy Abraham up front. Ferguson completely switched up how he played with Everton. He went for a pragmatic defensive 4-4-2, mate. <laughs> and he's gonna hit you on the counter. Really old school tactics. It was a passion project and dude, it worked. It didn't take long for the feel good Ferguson effect to get into effect. Richarlison scores a headed goal in the fifth minute to celebrate his new contract at Everton. And, <laughs> Goodison Park erupts. Shake of the head from Frank Lampard early doors, but you can tell the feel-good factor is there at this point. And the opening stage is actually quite worrying. Theo Walcott's looking really, really good down the right flank. He's actually roasting Azpilicueta over and over. The strike partnership of Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison start very well as well. In the opening sort of 20 minutes, they're turning Chelsea's defensive back line really easily. Although Chelsea throughout this game had between 70 and 80 possession most of the time, they still, it didn't feel like that. It was a lot of benign possession and when they get turned over, it seems far more threatening than when Chelsea have the ball. Everton seemed to be, you can tell it's like the passion of the Ferguson project because they're winning every 50-50, they're first at every ball, and Chelsea look rattled. In the 19th minute, Key makes a loose pass in his area that lands basically to the Chelsea's possession. It goes between Mason Mount and Willian. They overplay, and this is a theme that will be recurring throughout the entirety of this game. They overplay and they scuff a chance that really should be an equaliser in the 20th minute. By 22 minutes, I remember writing in my notes, as Plaqueta, poor defensively, poor offensively. You can kind of understand more and more and more, although Chelsea have Emerson, Alonso, and SP are left back, why Chelsea are being heavily linked with a left back. I don't want to hate on Azpilicueta. If we ever play a back three system, I want him a right centre back behind Reese James, but 
at left back now is getting silly. In the 27th minute, this is another recurring theme. Lovely time to run by Tammy when he was still sort of fresh in the game. From across from Willian comes across, he just scuffs it and doesn't put it in the net in the 27th minute. Again, this should have absolutely been the equaliser. Superb ball, superb run, just no contact for goal. And in the 33rd minute, Chelsea beat the press again. Mason Mount plays through. Puts in another superb cross to Tammy Abraham, who again, so close. This time he doesn't even meet it at all, but he's inches, inches away of scoring a goal. This is Chelsea in a nutshell this season and not being clinical. So the rest of the first half is kind of the same. Chelsea putting on loads of pressure, creating loads of chances, but not being clinical and looking defensively frail at the back when Everton break on them. It should 100% be one all, maybe even 2-1 going into the halftime break. How about this for a stat? Chelsea end the half with 76% possession, yet only one shot on target. So they had all that sort of combinations in the final third, but there was so much overplaying, they needed to just try and hit the back of the onion bag, as they say in London. No changes at the break for either team, and in the 49th minute, Richarlison strike partly this time, Calvert-Lewin scores a goal. All game Chelsea have been poor defensively, but this was the beginning of the real defensive disaster class that really starred both centre-backs and Kepa. This was a mix-up between both Zuma and Christensen when they just get scrambled between them. They should just clear the ball or they don't know what they're doing. Calvert-Lewin just gets the ball, gets in between and toe pokes at home. Thank you very much. 2-0, Everton. Although in the 51st minute that guy loves scoring goals, Mateo Kovacic scores a 30-yard screamer. I think it's a volley or a half volley. I'm pretty sure it's a volley and puts in the bottom left corner. I mean, pick that one out. This, this generally is a frustrating match review, but that goal from Mateo Kovacic, he probably should have had two in this game as well, is a positive. You know, he's scoring goals now. Amazing goals, like Valencia. The next 10 minutes becomes a bit of a sort of basketball game, like we attack, you attack. Everton come into the game a little bit more in terms of seeing the ball, but they're trying to expose Kante now, using Walcott to uh, basically break beyond him, because that's Blaquette staying up their pitch to try and, you know, get back into the game, like more so. The 64th minute sees a lovely combination from Chelsea that again, really, really should be a goal. It's a massive, massive chance. It lands to Mason Mount and he tries to curl it in the top corner, but it goes wide. Really, a shot should have been taken sooner, or at that point, try and carve something else, rather than take that shot on himself. Super frustrating. Although, at this point, and throughout the latter stages of the game, Kante does look better and better. At halftime, I was thinking, ooh, maybe take Kante off for Jorginho, try and change the game dynamic, but he becomes way more important in Chelsea's attack and ball progression. Again, when I say attack, I mean getting to the big chances. Chelsea's attack wasn't good in terms of finishing the big chances, and he did start to get the better of Theo Walcott as well. So Kante definitely grew into the game. hudson Adoy then comes on for Willian for fresh legs, pace, but I feel sorry for hudson Adoy when he comes on in these moments because he's coming on for dynamism and pace, but really he needs to start a game and get the chemistry of the team and really try to express himself and show his ability. These like last minute or like last 15 minute throw you on the pitch, I don't necessarily think it's good for him. Everton start getting deeper and deeper and deeper as Chelsea build up the pressure and in the 80th minute it really should be the goal that makes it two. Too. Chelsea are combining in the area this time, both Mason Mount and Azpilicueta see a succession of shots on target, denied and goes out for a corner, but again Chelsea should have scored, it should be 2-2. 82nd minute, Rich James comes off for Batshuayi, Frank Lampard's very much playing his hand here. So the 84th minute and another Calvert-Lewin goal. And so far, the main sort of stars in this defensive disaster class have been the centre-backs, but Kepa joins in and just basically passes the ball out like, like a fool to the opposition. It comes to like Calvert-Lewin, I think. Davies reels in the box, he tries to get a shot away, it sort of falls to Calvert-Lewin, he pokes it between, might even be between Kepa's legs at this point. 3-1 to Everton. Chelsea do pile on more pressure at times and they go into six minutes of stoppage time, but you know, it was one of those games that you'll watch the Valencia game, not the Valencia game, the Ajax game that Chelsea played in and you felt six minutes was an eternity and Chelsea could do anything. This game you thought, nah, they've tapped out, they can't do it, they'll try a little bit, they'll try and combine. Frank Lampard looked like he felt the exact same. So let's talk a little bit more about the game and close down this analysis screen. All right then, poor, poor, poor defensively, like really bad. As P, no matter how good little moments were, he was generally very bad in this game for me. Both centre backs were really poor. Reese James is always showing flashes of brilliance. Of course, there's moments of naivety in his game, 
just because he's a teenager playing in the Premier League um, for the first time. But you can see how much good there is in Reese James. Both centre-backs didn't cover themselves in glory. You could argue, a lot of people would have said earlier in the season, Tamori's the first choice and Rudiger is our best centre-back. So you'd think, oh, Tamori and Rudy, you know, centre-back pairing. Zuma and Christensen did themselves no favours in this game. So, four of the back five, maybe excluding Reese James, just because he was good in the first half and he had good moments in that game, were all thought. Chelsea's midfield was pretty good, Mateo Kovacic was excellent in this game, not just scoring the goal, I actually tweeted out his stats from the first half, they were pretty magnificent actually. And of course Kante grew into the game, got better defensively and became more integral for midfield to final third ball progression. Really, all of the front three were quite disappointing, sure they can combine well, I mean Mason got into some good bits, Tammy obviously is inches away from scoring two goals in that game, which we've seen Chelsea over the line for a win. Whatever their margins though, do you know what I mean? As frustrating as this result is, you can kind of forgive Chelsea, enough. well you don't want to forgive Chelsea because they didn't properly put in a performance, but you can see what's happening at Chelsea and what you know, how that was an off day, what Frank Lampard is trying to achieve, the talent that's clearly on the pitch and what they're missing. And then you look at the opposition at Everton and you think, right, they've just sacked Marco Silva, they're in the relegation zone, they're a team that feel like they should be challenging for top six and they've got a you know club legend back. It was just set up for a result like that if you're the god of narrative. Still, you should not bow down to narrative and Chelsea should do better, but you know, Chelsea have all the hallmarks of a naive team, and that's not just because they're young, that's just because they're new. They're a new team, they're a forward-thinking team in terms of style and progression, and of course they're a new manager. They've got a new manager, I'm in. So, as frustrating as this result is to take for Chelsea, they move. If Chelsea win against Lille midweek, they'll progress through to the Champions League knockout stages, and this result will very quickly be forgotten. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the match. Um, remember, go subscribe to Yam Plays. Watch me play FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode to cheer yourself up because that's pretty funny. Links in the top of the description. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. I'm out, you lot. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby